five. Says it's the milkman, Nick Morgan. Laser Louisiana's Nick Morgan. And the five X enemy, Chris Shaw. The lights are out. We go green. Here at Boot Hill Speedway. Race on Texas on the man as we get ready to rock and roll off a of turn number four. The three lot already. Mid pack with the zero of McKeecher getting a good start. With Funderburg driving it in deep there with the race lead. It's the Great Order Texas young man. Cameron for the race lead down the back straightaway. Perry going to get a good run to the outside of the 68 of James Martin for the third spot. He'll drive it in deeper than Martin does and he'll get. He'll edge ahead just a little. He gets a run off a four to the inside of Blanchard. Bo Perry comes in tonight with a lot of confidence. And he'll make a little bit of contact there. Some contact there with Cowboy Blanchard there for the second spot. And he'll go by. Nick Morgan moves there to the top of the field. No harm, no foul. Into three and four. Cowboy going to give him a shot in the shorts and return the favor for what happened here in a one and two along the go. So already a little bit of uh, favors being returned here at Boot Hill. Some more favors being thrown into one and two. Cowboy Blanchard not liking the way Bo Perry ran in there that previous lap. But Bo Perry trying to run away from him. And he's got the crosshairs down to the back bumper of the 18-year-old Cameron Furr off the floor. And they're side by side for the race lead in the one. Good it for the race lead here at Boot Hill with Factory Stock Heat Race number one. Presented by ABC Auto Parts off the exit of turn number two. Bo Perry out of Bowser City, Louisiana. Who scored the victory after that runner-up finish here to Josh Warren here at Boot Hill. A month ago, he followed it up by winning at Arclotex. And then, last Saturday night, he missed the heat race. He missed hot laps, the heat race, and the V-Rain. Started dead last in the main event and drove his way all the way to the second place spot. Only the center of the hourglass ticked away for him. And Cowboy Blanchard still throwing shots at him down there. They may have a talk after this race as... We are getting down to it. Just a few laps to go here. And a big push that time by the Gladewater, Texas. Racer Cameron Fur opening up the door for Bo Perry to get a run to the inside. Oh, and Cameron drove that car into downtown Dallas, Texas in <laughs> turn three. But it's going to keep him up top. He still serves the race lead down the front straight away with two to go. Six score, two laps to go in this eight lap affair. Cowboy Blanchard just drove it in deep once again into one and two. And Bo Perry gets another big run to the inside for the race lead. He's got the race lead. Down the back straight away, Bo Perry going to take away the top spot here as they come to the white flag off a of turn number four in heat race number one. Throw battles back to the inside, but not enough. The car doesn't stick like it did the previous seven circuits around the Blue Hill Speedway. And we'll have to settle for the rods made tonight unless Cowboy can take it away from him. Down the back straight away for the final time. What a run for Bo Perry tonight. Out of Bowser City, Louisiana, with that John McElmore built PTS power underneath the hood. He'll take that laser race car number 24 to Victor Lane. Bo Perry will win our heat race number one. Followed by the number one of Gladewater, Texas racer Cameron Fur. Third, we're going to Cowboy Richard Blanchard. Once again, in the Rollers of Auto 18, it's Scott Young and Sean Graham on the front row. And Sean Graham gets a good start from that outside line. Here we go, we're on our way. We're going to win this factory stock heat. If Mother Nature holds off here at the Boot Hill Speedway tonight, we'll find out who sits on the outside pole alongside Bo Perry. He started fifth in heat race number one and stormed his way to the race lead. It's Sean Graham, who will win his runner-up last Saturday night at Saline Motor Speedway in Mania, Louisiana, to Cody Robbins the main event, who will lead off of four of lap number one in heat race number two for the factory stocks here at the legendary Boot Hill. Graham trying to win here for the first time since last July. He's down the back straightaway. Jonathan Jones had an all kind of trouble with a 94 so far tonight. The battle for second's a good one. Oaks to the inside of Scott Young. Two good friends do battle for second. And the pair of rusty cars are going to go one and two right now. Sean Graham's meant to look that way. And the 91 of Craig Oaks. That old Malibu 91 rolling around Boot Hill tonight. Feature winner here a season to go. Oaks already has a win this season as well. Throughout the Texas Speedway, getting a little bit of modified action. The new SMTS is in town, down the back straightaway. This was in a lap track that Jonathan Jones is the Triple X rocket of Sean Graham. Sean Graham hooked up and digging right around the outside tonight. Now uh, everybody seems to be hugging the hub. Graham finding something right to the center to the high point of the Hill Speedway. Meanwhile, Oaks out of Marshall, Texas, looking to run him down for the race lead. The top five go to the main event tonight. With a slight drizzle coming down here in Greenwood. Off of four, a battle of the race lead shaping up. Down the front boulevard, it's Oaks at the crosshairs, foul to the back. Of that wagon triple X is Sean Graham. The Louisiana and Texan go at it for the top spot here at the hill in the turn number three. 
both have many laps here. Craig Oates won his first ever race here at the age of 15 years old. He'll go side by side for the race lead off the edge of the four. Two laps to go with six scored. Six scored, two to go. In a one. A big run that time to the inside of Graham as a running one. Oates, Oates will go to the inside for the race lead. Craig Oates and Sean Graham side by side for the race lead. Wins for the lead door to door. Graham on the lap, but only pushes up the race track. He'll relinquish the top spot with the white flag waving. Craig Oates is on the outside, but only can hold on one more. Graham, who appeared to have a dominant car in this one, will tap the ball off the exit of two on the final circuit. In the tournament three, and going to roll off the four for the final time. May not be the prettiest, but pretty never went fast tonight. Marshall, Texas racer Craig Oates has heat number two. Fall by the triple X rocket of Sean Graham. The 45 of Jason Ford of the outlaw chassis will grab third. Rick Glenn Perry inside of two. The nightmare Michael Knighton outside. <laughs> Just when the green flag dropped, it literally started coming down again. Unbelievable. Back resumed here on Race on Texas on demand for those that are watching. We've taken about a 10 to 15 minute break previous, previous to that last race due to the R word and Mother Nature. Wow, that was wild in a one and two. At 333 at Glenn Perry. Looked like he was about to lose the handle there. Number two, Jeff Rice overshot the corner trying to avoid him. And look at him pitch that car in the three and four. Out uh, of hunt down the 40 J, a cook for the race lead. Track is awfully slick right now, as you can see, but it's working for some of them. As Perry trying to get a run on the 43 J, a cook for the top spot, can't get the job done. Down the back straightaway, Glenn Perry trying to win the heat race just like his son Bo did in heat one tonight. He's diamonding off the corner. What a run for Glenn Perry. I believe Glenn Perry has found the quickest way around the Boot Hill Speedway right now. It's just tough to pass as BJ Cook's making that 43J wider than a triple wide trailer right now on a one. As the Nightmare Michael Knight's closing, here comes Perry for the race lead. Ooh. Perry can only pull to the quarters. Now the 43J in the center of the corner. When he diamonds off the exit right here, he gets a good, another good run. So it kind of bottoms out there off the exit of four. Down the front boulevard. I believe we're four and four to go. And he'll take another staff of the race leader to the inside of the car. Pushes up the racetrack. Steering hard to the left there off the exit of two. Is the triple three of Glen Perry out of Bossier City. I said it's some bow on heat number one. He'll be on the pole tonight. Craig Oaks alongside if we get to the main events and certainly hope that we do. Positivity, the name of the game is the key here. In a one, your top three could be covered by a blanket right now. Off the exit of two. Down the back straight away. The Nightmare Michael Knighton hoping that Perry gets in there. And tries to make a bonsai move on the, 40, on the 43J of B.J. Cook. And he can just go right by as they go side by side for the race lead off of four. And Perry's going to nose ahead for the top spot. And oh my, that would have been a dead heat at the line. I don't know. I wouldn't have been able to call it. Perry driving in deep there. And here comes the nightmare to the inside. He drove B.J. Cook back to Morningsport, Louisiana. And said, get out of my house. In the turn number three. It's going to be all Bossier City, Louisiana. And heat race number three. The triple three of Glenn Perry going to take the win. So the Perry family going to win their heats tonight. How about that? 11-year-old Shelby hitting in 28. The Marshall Missile, Derek Grigsby out of Marshall. Cliff Tupper in 23 rounds out the field. We're underway. How about that? Oh, Stuck's back behind the wheel. Gary Stuckey down the back straightaway in the nine. Gary Stuckey, great to see him back at Boot Hill Speedway. The Stuckey family promoted this racetrack back in the 2013 season. Three stocks, here we go, lights are out. So Cody Tupper with the race lead, but on the move is the Marshall Missile, Derek Grigsby. Driving the JCT on the sales, Marshall Lubin Auto. Number 69, that Eagles race team performance chassis. Grigsby said in victory lane at Arkansas, Texas a few weeks ago that this is uh, the best race car he's ever driven. And it has been indicative 
of the results that he's had so far with five wins already this season and the consistency that you expect out of the driver of the Marshall, Texas of Derek Grigsby. But, you know, some of that consistency kind of fell off of the 69 race team there uh, in between 2014 and 15 with some bad luck coming after he won the Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship and the Tootsie Smith Memorial all in the same season. But boy, 2017 has been an outstanding one so far for the Marshall Missile. Winning the Tony Stewart Invitational and really showing out for the Arklatex region and representing his home track right here in Greenwood of the Blue Hill Speedway and finally got himself a step into the Cowboy hat and he'll hunt down Gary Stuckey. Former teammate, if you will, off the exit of turn number four. The crosshair is down to the back deck lid. Number nine of Gary Stuckey is the Marshall Missile Derek Grigsby. Continues to attempt to march his way to the front of this one. Started a dead last in this race. Now the original restart will go side by side for second. Every position so valuable here to where you'll start and line up in the main event tonight. Mitch and Grigsby winning the Friday night for edition of the Tony Stewart Invitational. The Saturday night winner went to Denny Gabar. And they go side by side off of two and Grigsby will take second away from Gary Stuckey. Stuckey will get disposed of now as Tupper will see two to go. Cody Tupper way up front. Modeling his own business. He has no problems in this one. He has a straightaway and some on Derek Grigsby. He had to start dead last to get to second. Grigsby has said, I'd love to see another caution, but it's not going to happen. He'll have to start at no worse or no better than fourth tonight in the main event. As a final trip around this quarter mile speed plane here in Greenwood, Louisiana tonight. With Mother Nature all around us trying to doom us, but it's not going to work because this heat race will get in the history books. Cody Tupper wins his first limited modified heat of Boot Hill in 2017. He'll make it a one-two sweep for IRP with a Marshall Missile. Derek Grigsby grabbing second of the race on Texas.com. PTS power number 69. And 12. Lights are out. Run away. Duck leads him in the one and two in the 37. They're side by side for the race lead momentarily. Carl Lindsay gets a run to the inside for second down the back. Straight away. 27 and 37 go at it. Mm. Lindsay nearly stacks him up there in the entrance to turn number three. And I got a mouthful of a hot pocket. <laughs> They're so good. Craig Oaks will go to second. Mark Underwood Jr. continues to lead off the exit of turn number four. And Duck just lost the goose off of four. Oh. Well, it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. And he'll take a splash through the bath. <laughs> filled there. Oh, man. He'll be power washing that thing for a week. And a turn number one, Mark Underwood Jr. continues to set a toward pace around the Boot Hill Speedway. It looks like the drivers are all racing the racetrack right now. One thing to race your competitor if you get there. The race of the racetrack, too, is right now has developed a cushion right up there in the midpoint of the speed plant. Although all the new clay that's added to this racetrack, you can certainly see that tonight. And uh, surprisingly enough, Jason Ingles has not been able to march his way forward. Carl Lindsay still holds on to the third spot over racing Jason. The 91 of Craig Oak still occupies second with Underwood Jr., running away up front just like Cody Tupper did of heat race number one. Cody Tupper, winner of heat race number one will be a post tonight in his IRP chassis. And this Ingles Racing Performance chassis competitor will look to make it an IRP front row. IRP slipped the one, two positions in the first heat race as well with Derek Grigsby finishing second. And now you have Craig Oaks here in an IRP number 91 with the Miller horsepower underneath the hood running second. Lindsay, pressured by racing Jason Ingles, not able to do anything with him. As the white flag waves for the final time for the Lamp Pedal Motorsports number 99 of Mark Underwood Jr. Underwood off of two down the back straightaway for the final time. He'll look to get his first win at Boot Hill in 2017 tonight as he'll see the checker flag and he'll be your outside pole sitter alongside Cody Tupper. Mark Underwood Jr., your winner in 99. Second, we'll go to the Texas Jerky, Texas Fire and Safety number 91 of Craig Oaks from Marshall, Texas. Third, we'll go to Uncle Carl Lindsay out of Keithville. And once again, that'll be Robbie Hickman out of Marshall in the Seagulls Roofing. Number 39. As the lights are out, and half of them don't know it. Well, well one of them is, uh, <laughs> he knows that he can't go anywhere.
Oh, Mike Washburn said, yeah, it's slick. His car literally it's just... going to do you either. And that's one part of this sport that's very unexpected, and you never know what's going to happen, and that's a part of the game that you play in this sport. And off of four, it's going to be Mike Washburn setting the pace. And the Arclotex Sheet and Oil Welding sponsor number 27 machine. He'll lead the herd into one and two, and Dustin Hampton going to take the race lead off the exit of two, headed down the back straightaway. The Marshall Texan to the top spot, but Mike Washburn will fight back to the outside. Washburn and Hampton door to door, nearly made some contact, and he'll just way high wide and Hansel way up top where Grandpa keeps the good bourbon. Well, Mike Washburn went a little too hot there, but didn't really have a choice, and here comes Grant for the race lead. Robert Graham marching his way to the front. You can, it's very, very obvious the track is very, very slick right now, and these drivers are just racing the, <laughs> They're racing the racing service, obviously, and the caution is out. And the history continues on as Pomont Heat race number one of the night. Back on the way. So as long as we keep the cars rolled on it, it is awfully slick right now, especially for these machines here, these play mods with asphalt slick pull-off tires, the Hoosier F40. Yeah, a lot of power, no grip out there. They're going to especially look like they're not hooking up, so the modifieds ought to get around here very, very quickly. Majority racers do not set their cars up for these types of conditions. They don't even get race in the drizzle, but hey, Mike Washburn's going to take a stab for the race leader in turn three. He is ran down. Robert Graham for the top spot off the exit of four. With four and four laps to go. Washburn with a sight set on Robert Graham for the top spot. In a one. Here comes the Washburn to the inside. He'll take the race lead away with lap traffic approaching. Oh, and he'll get him the slick stuff in the three and drift up to the top side of the racetrack in the three and four. Oh, my goodness. The racetrack is so slick. Mike Washburn looking good with it, though. How about that Mike Washburn? Mike Washburn takes the top spot away. He's found the quick lane around Blue Hill. Whatever lane that is, he's found it. 2-0 this time for Shreveport, Louisiana's Mike Washburn. What? The white flag waving for Mike Washburn. Final time down the back straight away. Driving the Arkham takes sheet metal and welding. McDonald's number 27 only. Mike Washburn, your winner of Promont Heat Race number one, presented by RR Timber with the Seekers Roofing 22 of Robert Graham Jr. out of Marshall grabbing the bridesmaids here. And third of the go to the Seekers Roofing 39 out of Marshall of Robbie Hickman. I'm sorry, Michael Shaw's in the nine tonight. My mistake. Michael Shaw's in the nine tonight. Dean Rascal won the trophy dash in our most recent event. Two, four, six cars ready to go eight laps to distance. And pull on heat race number two here at the Boot Hill Speedway. We're underway. The drivers are racing the racetrack right now as well as their competitors. Oh my, stacking up down the back straight away. Jason Beasley has problems.
been kind of a wild one since the drop of the green in this one. As Vic Jr., your race leader at the Vivian in car four. This time by off turn number four, it'll be the white flag way in for Vic Jr. out of Vivian, Louisiana. The big show Eric Norris is good friend also out of Vivian. Right second off of four with the 11 of rubber vines in third. Checkers out. Vic Jr., your winner of Pullman Heat number two, followed by the big show Eric Norris in four. Third. It'll be Staples on the pole here. So more four cylinders coming in. We had a nice hill double and a photo finish at our last event here at Boot Hill as Cole Burleson. And Cole Derrick put on a great race here. Oh, my goodness, and that's what I was worried about. But no no harm, no foul. Unless the 10 gets stuck like Chuck. Yeah, I, sure, I certainly missed the old mini stock class. Boy, we saw some great races out of that. We have a lot of great racers who are here tonight that race in that division. Who would advance in their careers and such. And some that started off in that class and... You know, some that just strictly ran those four cylinder rear wheel drive cars, but man, they, they were a lot of fun in their heyday. As right now, it looks like Stephen Harris has the race lead, but he's got company for the top spot, and not long. Chris Collier takes the top spot away from the six of Harris. The 14 of Collier takes the race lead. Mike Staples with the race lead on the 14S, followed by the 6 of Stephen Harris at a Shreveport. Collier with the race lead, Harris second, Mike Staples is third, they're door to door for the fourth spot. Patrick Franks in the 50 out of Texture Cannon trying to work his way to the front. This time by, it's four in and four laps to go. Franks, who's been involved in some photo finishes himself. At other racetracks, had some has some wins at Arkle Tech Speedway in this four cylinder division. Has some wins at 67 Tech Circana. As into turn number three, Patrick Franks just drove that car deep to the outside. That was a power move, if you will. All the way up there in the slick stuff, the car still drifting off the exit of four, making a power move to the outside of Stephen Harris. Good driving there by the 50 of uh, Patrick Franks. As this time by, it should be two, oh, next time by it'll be two laps to go. Oh, yeah. I guess my calculations were correct. All right, I need to find some, uh, things, yeah. The white flag waving this time for your four cylinder Heat race leader in 14 of Chris Collier. The 113 finally came onto the racetrack there. That's Taylor Gooden. Gordon, sorry. And a Mitsubishi, a Mitsubishi Eclipse. So rolling off the four for the final time. We're going to face on the checkered flag your four cylinder heat race. A winner presented by R&R Timber goes to Chris Collier in 14. A Lone Star track regular making it over here tonight. The 50 of Patrick Franks out of Texarkana comes from the tail, and he'll be tough to beat in the main event tonight. 
Grabbing third is the six of Stephen Harris in the six. And the C49 of Justin Converse. Winston Dex is driving the number 20. A nice looking machine for him. And the specialty contract is Hatfield Powered Mars Race Car 6X. Last night's modified winner at Timberline Speedway KP. Kyle plays not. Making his first start at Hill in four years. Lights are out. We are underway. Good start for KP. Well, you nearly crossed underneath the 211 there. Thought he was going to get to the inside of the Dewberry Texan. Chase Hatton for a second. Can't get the job done. Not able to sidestep him there with the race leading the turn one on the opening circuit and off a four to lead lap one. We'll go to Hot Louisiana's Micah T. Micah Thompson. And that Marshall Noble Holmes. PTS powered number 51. John McLemore, boy, he builds a hell of a power plant underneath the hood of one of these machines, doesn't he? Factory stock, limited mod, modified, late model, it doesn't matter. If you want power to the ground, no other than power to spare. John McLemore out of in Louisiana. He was a heck of a racer himself. So he knows how to get these power plants to hook up. As a Hatfield power plant underneath the machine of the 6X for last night's Timberline Speedway, overall modified main event winner KP Kyle plays on. Plays on, they started off the 2017 season racing up and down the road with the United States Modified Touring Series. Grew up racing weekly at the Sabine Motor Speedway down in Manny, Louisiana. Called that racetrack home, but now not racing modifieds there on a weekly basis. They rained out tonight anyway. But Kyle plays on. Looking to hunt down the 51 of Thompson for the race lead. It's a pair of Mars race cars running one and two in this one. Jimmy and Chris Mars build these machines out of Menominee, Wisconsin. We've seen Chris Hennigan pick up 11 wins in one year ago, but he is not still satisfied with that car fully. And let's not dive into that too hard and say that he didn't like the car. Chris can drop anything. He's won a Skyrocket, a GRT, a Dirtworks. It doesn't matter what it is, a craft. You throw Hennigan in whatever you want, and he's going to put it to the front. No Hennigan in victory lane tonight, but last night, his son, the fourth generation racer at a Marshall, Dustin Hennigan. Dustin Hennigan got a victory last night in the mini wedge cards. As right now, Prezon, though, looking, to, looking for a clean weekend sweep. Trying to get a win to the great state of Texas last night and come back to his home state and win one here at Boone for the first time in his career off of four. Micah T with the white flag, and KP undoubtedly has the fastest car on the speedway right now. Let that hat foot power sing underneath the hood of that Mars race car, CMD race graphics. Specialty Contractor 6X in the three for the final time. It's going to be all Micah T. Micah Thompson on the front row in the Richie Thompson Motorsports Marshall Mobile Homes number 51. Second, we're going to KP Kyle Blazon. So running over, we'll grab fourth and 20. You know, it's quality over quantity night. There's some good. Heck, man, I cannot see. 16 year old kid, Ty Clampett. Nope, sorry, that's James Griffin. Sorry, James Griffin, the 2000 Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship winner in modified ranks. Right fourth here on the opening lap as Caterin wins it. Do battle for second in the tournament three is Jeff Leary. Oh, and some contact there. Early, and Winslet just got on the brakes hard. Caterin wins it. Not even so sure that they, well, they had to touch as that quarter panel was kind of crushed in there just a little. But a great job there for Winslet to avoid even a harder disaster. They could have both got smushed into the wall. So Cater continues to hold on to the second spot here off the exit of four. The 12 and a half of James Griffin. The Dirty Dozen. James Griffin, the former Open Wheel Modified Track Champion here at the Boudreaux Speedway. Like I said, the former Louisiana State Dirt Track Championship winner and the owner and builder of bootlegger race car chassis. Did some very fast factory stocks. You're looking to get into the factory stock game. He's a man with a plan. He has some good competitors, good cars, good drivers behind the wheel in his stable, the bootlegger chassis. Right now, he finds himself sitting in the third spot in the Vermont Heat Race number two with four laps scored and four laps to go in this eight-lap affair. A big bobble down the back straightaway that time. Winslet will go to third now as Griffin bobbled big down the back straightaway. Jeff Larry annihilating his competition on this one in the 15G. Jeff Larry looking to sit on the outside pole tonight in to the main event. Larry's won here in his career as a few years ago. And that Dirt Devil 15G. You know, most notably Jeff Larry. That solid runner-up finished in 2013 in that day race on the 10,000 on Doug Murphy Memorial. Second to Jeremy Payne is a white flag race for the Linden racer, Jeff Larry. 
Or grew up watching his father Gilly literally dominate in the number 98 Camaro in the street stock division at the old Webster Champion Park Speedway. Literally won every single Saturday night. <laughs> He was, he was the West Grigsby of Champion Park. Off of four, your winner of the 15G is Jeff Larry. Second, a good run for the Richie Thompson Motorsports 6 in with Mike Cater. Third, we go to the reigning track champion of the Yard Services LLC.